look at a market like the Puget Sound, it's a pretty safe place to allocate capital to. That's right. So it's been proven to be a really good market to invest in. Yeah. Welcome to our Industrial Advisors podcast. We have a five-minute Friday, Bill Condon and Matt McGregor. We're going to talk about the owner-user market in the Puget Sound, and it's back. It's back, baby. It's back. So talk a little bit about what the numbers look like year to day. Yeah. So surprisingly, there's been 23 sales that I would say were justified as you know good industrial sales, whether it be the owner-user or investor. And of the 23, owner-users acquired 13 of them. That is the first time, you know, year to date, I would say. And if we predict that their owner users are going to finish the year over investors in volume, it would be the first time since 2008 that owner users have acquired more buildings, not on dollar volume, but on number of transactions. Because it's typically smaller. Yeah. Since 2008. So that is a long haul for investors to overtake users and substantially during those years, right? There wasn't even close. Right. And so right now, through yesterday when we pulled the numbers, users uh, 13, investors 10. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Well, I think the investors absolutely despise vacancy right now. Yeah. And so these buildings that are trading, several of them that we thought and some of them that we sold that would go to investors and typically would have were either empty or about to be empty and investors are just not aggressive and here comes the users. And at the same time, I would say in our careers outside of call it 2009 and maybe early 10, this has been a quiet, the second quietest period of, of our career from investors. So investors are not being aggressive. They're being very careful. They're very specific in what they're looking for. And it's not vacancy. Yeah. And I think you mentioned that's a really good point. So when if the interest rates, when they mm-hmm. rose, that compressed or that made cap rates also rise, right? That's and right. So because of that, the price per pound for a building came down back into where users were, hey, we're at the table again, right? Because yeah. pricing got so aggressive that's when you right. were talking about cap rates at in, you know, upper threes, right? right. At four cap. That just priced a lot of those users out of the market. Right. And some of those users were sitting on cash, waiting for the market to correct and get back and to a point. now cash is king. Cash is king. It's back to a price per pound basis where they're comfortable and they're back again. So I think the interest rate factor mm-hmm. combined with lack of what was so much demand from investors, even on vacancy, that's cooled off a little bit, has led the user market to, to really come back. That's right. I totally agree with that. So what do you think when, when a user is looking at leasing or owning a building? What do you think, you know, a couple of things they should be looking at? There are several criteria, but I would say the two majors are, is that return on real estate going to benefit you more than putting that into your business? Okay, so the average person would say, you know, commercial real estate would give you a yield of three or 4% annually. Obviously it changes on the buy, right? Yeah. You know, what, by fixing that into real estate, and controlling that versus taking that millions of dollars in, in most cases and putting that toward the growth of your company, what's the return, right? Therein lies the first, the, the, the question, you know? And then I would say, you know, the second one would be, you know, are you gonna be in that building a long time? And is that first few years, which is a lot more expensive, right? Because of the, you know, down payment, down payment yeah. structuring that, you know, the amount of cash to, move into that building and the, you know, all that goes into owning a building, you know, usually if you do a lease versus own scenario and that return metrics is taken out, right. Yeah. And you're just looking at it. Usually it starts to make sense around year eight, yeah. right. I, in a building to hold it. But then when you put that, the first point in, is that a good place to place the money versus, you know, keeping that cash on hand to grow? Yeah. And, you know, and it d- depends on the market, too, where you look at a market like the Puget Sound, it's a pretty safe place to allocate capital to. That's right. So it's been proven to be a really good market to yes. invest in. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, with the run up on rates over, you know, call it 2018 through 22, that was historic. So I think a lot of owner users are going, well, if I can buy a building and stabilize this, 
because we had double digit rent growth year over year, right? Yeah. So I think a lot of users, to add to another point of why they're buying, is that run up on rates. Yep. And I think we'll see continued uh, user demand for sure through the rest of the year. So it'll be interesting to track where it ends up. Are there more user or investor transactions in 2024? What's your prediction on that? I think at the end of the day, there's going to be more investor transactions because that market's coming back. You know, there there is significantly more demand today than there was at the beginning of the year from investors. So I, I think that'll continue. I agree. Yeah. I think the investors will overtake it. I don't think it'll be overly dominant, but if I was going to guess, it would probably flip at least the second half of the year. Maybe you would have 17 on the investor side and maybe something like 10 or 11 on the user side. There you go. Thanks right. for listening. Thank you. Thank you.